Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit, the Bible refers to, is a person. He is a he. He is not an it. I don't think anyone would like to be referred to as an it. Amen. We refer to animals as it. We refer to objects in substances as it, but we really shouldn't refer to the Holy Spirit as it because he is the third person of the Trinity and he is a living person just like God is a living person, just like angels are living persons, personalities, uh, just like demons. Now I'm not comparing the Holy Spirit to demons of course, but the point I'm trying to make here is that demon spirits are indeed personalities, amen, and the Holy Spirit, the angels of God, and even God himself are personalities, they're persons. Right here in John chapter 16, if you'd read with me in verse 13 and 14, Jesus said, how be it when he, notice now, not how be it when it, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Jesus said, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Now right here, in two verses of Scripture, the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the one who knows the Holy Spirit better than all of us combined, referred to the Holy Spirit, no less than nine times as he, never as it. Jesus never referred to the Holy Spirit as it. He always referred to the Holy Spirit as he, and we should always respectfully refer to the Holy Spirit as it. You know, the Holy Spirit is not some impersonal force or power that we're trying to get a hold of. The Holy Spirit is a person, and he's the third person of the Trinity, and we're not trying to get a hold of him. He's trying to get a hold of of us. Amen. Again, Jesus, nine times in two verses of Scripture, Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as He or Himself. Again, this is because the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not an animal. He's not a substance. He's not a force. He is a person. He is a personality. Amen. Somebody once asked the question, well, how can you be a spirit and be a personality at the same time? Well, um, in order to answer that question, first, one must come uh, to an understanding of the difference between a personality and a corporeity. The difference between a personality and a corporeity. Now, you don't have to have a physical body to be a personality. Angels, as I said, and demons, they don't have physical bodies, but they indeed are persons. Personally, I have seen both angels and demons. I've had multiple visitations of angels in my life, and I've also had encounters where I have indeed seen into the spirit realm through the uh, gift of the spirit, discerning of spirits, and I too have seen demon spirits. And they do indeed have bodies. Now, not physical bodies. They have bodies of a different materiality, a heavenly materiality, a heavenly substance, just like God has a body of heavenly substance, as does the Holy Spirit. You don't have to have a physical body to be a personality. Now, you know that God exists, and God exists as a person, but He does not have a physical body such as you and I have physical bodies. Amen? To be a corporeity, that means to be a spirit being who lives within a physical body. That would be you, and that would be me. You see, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that you are a spirit. You're created in God's image. Genesis 1, 26 says that you're created in the image and in the likeness of God. In John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're created in God's image and likeness and God is a spirit, that means you're a spirit. But as I said, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 reveals that although you are a spirit, and you have a mind, you have a soul, which is comprised of your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions, you live in a body. See, you are a spirit being, but you live, you as a human being are a spirit being, and you live in a physical body. That makes you a corporeity. See, you are a spirit living in a physical body. You're a, you're a, you're a corporeity, but you do not have to live within 
a physical body. You do not have to be a corporeity in order to be a personality. Now, God doesn't have a physical body, but as I said, he does have a body, a body of a different uh, materiality than our bodies, not a physical body, a body somehow that is of a heavenly substance, a heavenly materiality, uh, a celestial materiality, if I may, um, slightly different, actually I shouldn't say slightly, it's tremendously different than the bodies that uh, we uh, use as vehicles while we are here on the earth. I often refer to my body as my earth suit, amen. Jesus had to don an earth suit in order to come from the heavenly realm, in order to come from the planet heaven and live on the planet earth. And yes, heaven, uh, the Bible reveals, is indeed a planet. And we'll have a whole lesson on that uh, in a not too distant broadcast. Jesus uh, existed in spirit form in heaven before he came here. You know, uh, the beginning of Jesus' existence was not here on earth. Jesus existed um, uh, as a spirit in heaven, but in a spirit body, just like his father has a spirit body before he came here on the earth. Jesus, um, beginning as an earth person, an earth being, uh, began here on earth. That was the beginning of his physical existence as a corporeity, a spirit living in a human body when he came here to earth. But Jesus uh, has always existed in heaven. Jesus has always existed in the dateless past. Amen. And he had a spirit body in heaven, just like the Father has a spirit body, and just like the Holy Spirit has a spirit body. You know, in uh, Exodus chapter 33, uh, Moses had an encounter with God up on Mount Sinai. And he said to God, he said, God, could I see your glory? You can read this in Exodus chapter 33. I'll have to quote it for you to the best of my ability. I don't have it with me here right now, but I believe you'll find in verse 21, 22, and 23, where Moses asked God if he could see his glory. And God responded to Moses by saying, I will show you my goodness, Moses. That's always been fascinating to me that Moses asked God if he could see his glory. And God responded to Moses by saying, sure, I'll show you my goodness. God's glory is God's goodness. God's glory is God's goodness. Amen. But during that encounter that Moses had with God up on Mount Sinai, and he asked if he could see God's glory, God said to Moses, I will put you in the cleft of that rock before you, and I will cover you with my hand, but I'll not allow you to see my face because no one can see my face and live. He said, Moses, I will not allow you to see my face. I will cover you with my hand, and when I pass by, you will see my back parts. Now listen, the Bible says, Exodus chapter 33, verses 22 and 23, that God has a face. God has hands. God has back parts. No disrespect intended, but how do you think he sits on that throne in heaven? He sits on his back parts. God has arms and legs, and God has hands. He has a head. He has a face. Again, the Bible says in Genesis 1.26 that you and I, as human beings, are created in the image and in the likeness of God. As a matter of fact, Hebrews chapter 1 says that Jesus Christ, when he came into the earth, he was the express image of God, the express image of God. If you want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus. You want to know what Jesus looks like? Look at me. Look at you. Look at any other human being. You want to see what God looks like? Look at human beings. We're created in the image and in the likeness of God. And God himself told Moses that he has a face, he has hands, and he has a back. Amen. Listen, God lives in a spirit body, not in a physical body, but he lives in a body nonetheless. Just like angels have bodies and demons have bodies, they are of a different materiality, a heavenly materiality, a heavenly substance, not an earthly substance, not uh, flesh and blood like you and I live in, but God indeed has a body and the Holy Spirit has a body. And this is why we should never refer to him as it. We should always respectfully refer to the Holy Spirit as, uh, as he. Amen. Listen, the Holy Spirit has a mind, he has a will, he has intellect, he has emotions just like you and just like me. I'm going to just look at some verses of scripture here with you. 
Folks, we need to become acquainted with the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus could do nothing in the earth without the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that the Bible reveals in Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, that Jesus Christ actually came into this earth, and one translation of the Bible says that he stripped himself of his godness. He stripped himself of his deity and humbled himself like unto the fashion of a man. He became a human being, just like you and just like me. And he went down there in Matthew chapter 3 to the river Jordan where John the Baptist baptized him in water. And when he came up out of the water, uh, 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 um, uh, the presence of a dove symbolizing the presence of the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. And at the time he was water baptized, he was actually even baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you know, before Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit, he never performed one miracle. The Bible never reveals Jesus, never records Jesus as having performed one miracle until he was baptized with the Holy Spirit when he was down there in the River Jordan getting baptized in water. And you know, that's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost in power, and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus, the Bible says, was anointed with the Holy Ghost in power because God was with him. That's what enabled Jesus to go about doing good and performing all the Spirit was indwelling Jesus while Jesus lived uh, on this earth. Amen. Listen, the Holy Spirit has his own mind, just like God has his own mind, just like Jesus has his own mind, and just like you have your own mind. He's a person. He is a personality. He's not a corporeity. As I said, he doesn't live in a physical body, but he does have his own body. He does have his own face, his own hands, his own arms, his own legs. He has his own mind, the Bible reveals. In Romans chapter 8, verse 27, the Bible says that Jesus searches the mind of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is praying for you. You can read that in Romans chapter uh, verse, uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 8 and verse 27. He has his own mind. Jesus searches his mind. He searches the mind of the Spirit as the Spirit prays for you. Listen, you can't be an it and have a mind. You have to be a personality in order to have a mind. Amen. Listen, the Holy Spirit also has his own will. He has his own will, as I said. He has a mind, he has a will, he has intellect, and he has emotions, just like you and just like me. Again, the Holy Spirit is, is a member of the Trinity. He's just like God. And the Bible says that you and I are created in the image and in the likeness of God. That would mean that we're created in the image and in the likeness, in part, of the Holy Spirit. He has his own will. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11, that the Holy Spirit distributes the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, the power gifts, the revelation gifts, and the utterance gifts. They're broken into three groups. There's nine gifts. He distributes them. He distributes them. The person of the Holy Spirit distributes the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, according to his will. Not according to my will, not according to your will, but according to his will. The Holy Spirit has his own mind and he has his own will. He distributes the gifts of the Spirit. The working of miracles, the gift of faith, the gifts of healings, um, uh, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, those are the nine gifts of the Spirit. As I said, they're broken down into three groups. The power gifts, they're called power gifts because they do something. The revelation gifts, they're called revelation gifts because they reveal something. And the utterance gifts, which are called utterance gifts because they say something. The Holy Spirit distributes all nine gifts, all three categories, according to His will. He has a will because He's a person. He's not an it. He has um, feelings and real live emotions, just like you and I do. You know, the Bible reveals in Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 9 and 10 that Israel in the wilderness, the 40 years that they wandered in the wilderness, they vexed the Holy Spirit. He did everything he could to help them, and they continued to turn against him by turning against the Spirit of God. And the Bible says they vexed or they grieved the Holy Spirit. Folks, you can't grieve an impersonal force 
or power. You can't grieve in it. The Holy Spirit was grieved by the nation of Israel. As they walked 40 years, they wandered in rebellion and grieved the Holy Spirit of God. You know, the Holy Spirit also experiences love. He experiences all the same emotions that we do, that you and I do. This is why the Bible says that we've been created in the image and in the likeness of God. He's a part of the Trinity. He's a full-fledged member of the Trinity. You know, the Bible says, He who loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Listen, if God is love, then of course the Holy Spirit is love. The Holy Spirit not only has love for you, but He is love, but He does indeed have love for you. The Apostle Paul pled with the Romans in Romans chapter 15, I believe in verse 30. You'll have to check it. I'll get you in the neighborhood. You'll have to check the address. Amen. Romans chapter 15, I believe it's in verse 30. Paul pled with the Romans. He said, by the love of the Holy Spirit, I plead with you to continue to strive with me in prayer. He said, by the love of the Holy Spirit, he said, I'm being compelled by the love of the Holy Spirit within me to plead with you to continue to strive with me in prayer. You know, the Bible says in Romans 5, 5, if you're a born-again believer today, a Christian, a Christ-believing, born-again believer, that the love of God has been shed abroad by the Holy Spirit who is within you. That's how God's love indwells you today, through the person of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. Nine times in those two verses of Scripture, Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as He, not as it. And the Scripture reveals that the Holy Spirit has a mind. He has a mind. Jesus searches the mind of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit prays for you. To see what it is the Holy Spirit is praying for you concerning. The Holy Spirit has a will, the Apostle Paul revealed. He distributes the nine gifts of the Spirit according to His will. The Holy Spirit has a mind. He has a will. He has intellect. He has emotions. He's, he's easily grieved. He experiences love just like you and I experience love. As a matter of fact, Paul told the Ephesians in Ephesians 4.30 to never grieve the Holy Spirit. If it wasn't possible to grieve the Holy Spirit, Paul would not have admonished us to never do such a thing. Amen. Listen, the Holy Spirit also possesses superior intellect. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, we don't have time in this broadcast to read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through through 11, the Bible says the Apostle Paul, writing by the agency of the Holy Spirit, said that no one but the Holy Spirit knows all the deep things of God. No one but the Holy Spirit knows all the deep things of God. You talk about intellect. Woo the Holy Spirit knows everything about God. That's a big statement. That's a mouthful. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He knows Everything that God knows, and He knows everything about God perfectly. My brother and my sister, no it, no impersonal force, no impersonal power knows everything about Creator God. But the Holy Spirit does because He is a person, and He has a mind, He has a will, He has an intellect, and He has emotions. He not only has intellect, He is of superior intellect. He is the most intelligent of all persons all personalities. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God also enabled the Apostle Paul to perform the miracles that Paul performed. Romans chapter 15, verse 19. You better check my references. Again, I'll get you in the neighborhood, uh, but uh, you'll have to check the address for yourself. I know it's chapter 15, somewhere around verse 19. The Apostle Paul said that all the signs and wonders that were performed in his ministry were performed by the person of the Holy Spirit performed by the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows whenever someone releases faith for a miracle and He moves immediately to perform a miracle on behalf of that person's faith. That's why the Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Um, those who cometh unto God must not only believe that He exists, but that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now we, we could talk about that for the rest of the evening, potentially. Amen? The Holy Spirit performing miracles through Jesus, through Peter, through Paul, and through, through believers still in the earth today. But um, 
time will not permit us to go any further in that direction. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a voice. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, the Bible reveals that the Apostle Paul and some others were together uh, fasting and prayer. And right in the middle of that fasting and prayer and ministering to the Lord through praise and worship, the Bible says the Holy Spirit spoke and said, Separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work unto which I've already called them. The Holy Spirit spoke right there in Acts chapter 13, verse 2. The Holy Spirit spoke and said, Separate unto Now, we don't know how he spoke. Maybe through the still small voice, maybe through his a more authoritative, what we call audible voice, maybe through tongues and interpretation, maybe through prophecy. We don't know. We only know that he spoke and we only know that he still speaks today. Amen. He is the agency through whom Jesus does everything in the earth today. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still speaking to the church today. He's still speaking today in Romans chapter 2, verse 7. Verse 11, verse 17, and verse 29. Four times, Romans 2, verse 7, verse 11, verse 17, and verse 29. The Bible says, the Apostle John wrote, by the agency of the Holy Spirit, let him who has an ear hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. He wants you to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He's the only way to God. You aren't going to get to God going around Him, going through Him, going over Him, going under Him. You're going to have to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life if you're going to make heaven your eternal home. And the Holy Spirit pleads with you today to do exactly that. He's speaking to you today. The Bible says, let him who has an ear hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Listen, the Holy Spirit can be lied to. Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit, and it cost them their lives. That's in Acts chapter 5. The Holy Spirit can be resisted. Stephen preaching to the Jews about Israel's unbelief. In Acts chapter 7, 51, he said, You uncircumcised of heart, you stubborn, foolish people, you always resist the Holy Spirit. You can't lie to an it. You can't resist in it. The Holy Spirit can be quenched because Paul told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 or 19 to never quench the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit can be cursed and he can be slandered. Jesus said all manner of blasphemy will be forgiven man except blasphemy and slander against the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't lie to, a, to an impersonal force or power. You can't resist in it. You can't slander and curse in it. You can't quench in it. Amen. Listen, these are all things you don't want to be doing anyway. We're not encouraging you to do such a thing. These are all things you don't want to do. But my point is the Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. All of these things prove that the Holy Spirit is indeed a person. He's not some wimpy, wispy, and personal force or power mindlessly floating around the universe. He's a person. And nine times in two verses alone in John chapter 16, I read them to you at the beginning of the broadcast, Jesus referred to him as a he. I want to encourage you today, hook up respectfully with the person of the Holy Spirit. He loves you. He wants to empower you. Amen. Oh, praise be to God. Without, without the Holy Spirit, Jesus would not have been able to perform the works, the mighty works of power that he did while he was in the earth. The Bible says that God anointed Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost in power, and then he was able to go about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Listen, all goodness is of God, all oppression is of the devil. If Jesus was as dependent on the person of the Holy Spirit as he was during his earth ministry, how much more dependent are you and I on the person of the Holy Spirit? Now, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I ask you to fill those within the sound of my voice, those who are not saved, I ask that they'd be saved through accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Those who are saved and who are not filled with your, your presence, the power of your presence, I ask you to fill them with the power of your presence now in Jesus' name. And he'll do that. You know, if you'll give up astrology, if you'll give up sin, if you'll seek and up, if you'll give up seeking power from all other sources apart from God, he'll fill you. He'll fill you. He'll fill you with His Holy Spirit, and He will speak to you. And Jesus said, He'll even show you things to come. Well, be blessed in Jesus' strong name.